Hi there, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In this video, we are going to do the circuit analysis for this example here. And we're going to use the mesh current analysis method to do that. I'm not going to go through the background theory of it, I'm just going to jump right in. So the first step when doing the mesh current analysis is to identify all of the loops in the circuit. And we have three loops. We've got one loop here, one loop here, and one loop here. I'm going to start with this one and identify that loop as I1. I'm going to identify this loop as I2. And I'm going to identify this loop with the 24 volt source as I3. Now one thing you'll note is I've made all of these circuit loops in the clockwise direction. They don't all have to be in the clockwise direction. I just did that for consistency's sake. Okay, the next step is to draw the, identify the polarity across each one of the voltages. And we need to do that for each one of the individual currents for each resistor. So if there's two currents going through the resistor, that means it needs to have two different polarities on it based on those two currents. Um, looking at I1, um, current is going in that direction through R2. So the polarity will be that way. Current's going that direction through R3 and current's going that direction through R4, so we get that polarity. For I2, current's going in that direction for I2, so the polarity across I3 is actually opposite for I2 compared to I1. For R5 here, the current's going that direction, so it'll be positive on that side, negative on that side, and that direction for R4, so positive on that side, negative on that side. And then for, our, for, for uh, current number three, we'll have positive there, negative there for R4, and positive here and negative here for R1. So you'll notice that each one of the resistors that has two currents going through it, two of, the, two of our defined currents going through it, the polarities are, are opposite. One thing to note is there's really only one total current going through each one of these resistors. This is just part of the method for the mesh current analysis. Step number three is to come up with the KVL loop equation for each one of these loops. So starting with loop one here. What do we get? Well, we need a starting point and, and, and loop around to get back to that same starting point. So let's start at, at the top here. So current's going through R2, and so we're going to get a drop across it there. So we'll have negative I1 R2. And then going this way, we'll also have negative I1 R3. But we also have I2 going through R3, and it's going in the opposite direction. So if we look at the direction as we're going around this loop, it's going from negative to positive with I2. So that'll be plus I2 R3. And then R1 with the I1 current going through it, we'll have minus I1 R1. But the polarity for the I3 is, is opposite, and so we'll actually have a plus I3 R1. And since we've gone around the complete loop, that should give us zero volts. For loop number two, let's start at this point and go around the loop that way. So for R4, we get negative I2 R4 plus I3 R4. And then through R3, we get minus I2 but plus R1 minus I2 R3 plus I1 R3. And then we only have one current going through R5, and that's going to be negative. And we're back to the beginning of the loop. So we're back to zero. And then for KVL, for loop number three, what do we have? Well, we have, if we start at this point and go around, then well, we have 24 plus 24 volts, and then minus I3R1, but then we also have I1 going through R1, and because we're going from negative to positive, 
when we're going around the loop in the clockwise direction, we'll have plus I1 R1, and then minus I3 R4. But we also have I2 going in this direction, but we're going in the loop in the opposite direction, so we're going from negative to positive. So we have a plus I2 R4. And we're back to the beginning of the loop. So that's that loop equation, KVL equation, should sum up to zero. So the next step is to group all the terms in each one of these expressions. And the two terms I'm going to group are the I's, the current one, current two, and current three, because those are my unknowns. So I've got I1, and I've got uh, minus R2, minus R3, minus R1. So minus R1 is 150, minus R2 is 50, and then minus R3 is 100. Now I'll, I'll just combine all that together, so that gives me 150, 200, 300. plus I2. And what do we have for our I2? Well, we just have R3, which is 100. And then plus I3. And what do we have for I3? Well, we just have the one term, which is R1. So that's 150. For the second loop, I do the exact same thing. I've got I1 times R3, which is 100. I've got I2 times uh, times minus R4, minus R3, minus R5. So that's R4, 3, and 5, or 3, 4, 5. So I've got 100 plus, or minus 100, minus 300, minus 250. So that gives me minus 650. Plus I3, well, I only have the one. I've got R4, which is 300. And that all equals zero. Now down here for KVL3, I have 24 plus I1 times R1, which is 150, plus I2, which is just the R4, which is 300, plus I3. Well, for I3, I've got minus R1, minus an R4, just those two. So minus 150 minus 300, so minus 450. And that, of course, all equals zero. Uh, I'm going to rewrite these expressions here just to, to get it in a little bit more standard form. OK, now I have three equations. I have three unknowns. So I've got a si and I have a system of linear equations here. So I could use a solution method of my choice. I'm not going to go through the solution here. I'm going to post a couple of videos of different alternatives that you can use for solving it. But basically what it comes down to is with this system of linear equations, I can rewrite this in matrix form. Where this 3 by 3 matrix here are the expressions with, that go along with the variables. So that's minus 300, 100, 150. 100 minus 650, 300 minus 150 minus 300 and 450. So that all gets multiplied by my unknowns, which I put in this vector form. And that works out to minus 300. The answer is over here. And so basically what I'm doing is I, I need to find those I1, I2, and I3. And you can use MATLAB to do it, you can use Excel to do it, you can use a calculator to do it, or you can even do it by hand. And when you do solve the system of equations, what you end up with is I1, 93.8 milliamps, I2, 77.2 milliamps, and I3, 136.1 milliamps. Now I can use these currents and I can figure out the voltage across and the current through any of these individual resistors.
And even if I don't want to figure out the voltages across and the currents through each one of these resistors, a good idea is to check my results. There's all sorts of places where it's really easy to make a mistake, um, either in the building up of the equations or of the solving of the equations. So a check that I can perform would be to see if the voltage across R4 plus the voltage across R1 adds up to 24 volts. So let's do that right now. Uh, the current through R1, that's going to be, and we're going to define the current through R1 as going this direction and R4 going that direction. Current through R1 is going to be I3 minus I1. That's 42.3 milliamps. And therefore, the voltage across R1 will be that 42.3 milliamps times 150 ohms. And that works out to 6.345 volts. Okay, and then the current through R2, uh, no, that's R4, sorry current through R4, we define it as going this way, will be I3 minus I2. So that'll be 136.1 milliamps minus 77.2 milliamps, 58.9 milliamps. Now we have the voltage across, or now we have the current through R4, so we can figure out what the voltage across R4 is. It'll be that 58.9 milliamps times 300 ohms. And that works out to 17.67 volts. So VR1 plus VR4 should be approximately 24 volts. And if you take that 6.345, plus 17.67, and it is approximately 24 volts. It's a little bit more because of rounding that I've done throughout the system, but you can see that uh, I have verified that at least that voltage is equal to that voltage. So I probably didn't make any mistakes throughout my calculations, and it's a good idea to do this kind of check just to make sure that you didn't. So that's it. Hopefully this example has given you enough info so that you can take what I've done here and apply it to your own circuits. Use this mesh current analysis to figure out the voltages across and the currents through all of the components in your circuit. I appreciate you tuning in to my show. See you next time. Bye.